Okay, everybody. Um, now that we know about the beginnings of the periodic table and we have a couple of scientists we reviewed, uh, we're going to move on to some of the how to navigate the table with some certain data points, certain trends in the table. Uh, and this is based on a lot of things we talked about with the atom. We're just going to look a little deeper into it and see if we can figure out some of the whys and, and how the table is organized in terms of some data points. And the first data point I want to take a look at is something called the atomic radius. And again, the radius of an atom is really very, very similar to the radius of a circle, except it's got a couple of different things in it. So just a couple of quick things along the way. Really, atomic radii is useful for determining many aspects of chemistry, all right, on how the, the, um, the atoms behave, such as variable chemical and physical properties or physical and chemical properties. All right, can be looked at the radius. And really, when you look at the radius, you're looking at those valence electrons and their proximity to the nucleus. So the atomic radius is approximate distance from the nucleus um, from the nucleus out to the outer edge of the electron cloud, which is a little weird because, again, the electron cloud doesn't have a very clearly defined edge. So this is an approximate value. It's nothing that's very you know set in stone. Um, the atomic radius is used many times to predict the behavior of the elements. And just a couple of things you want to keep in mind, okay? So how do you actually measure this? And what they do is they measure by measuring half the distance between the two nuclei of a diatomic molecule. So, again, you're taking a molecule – and you're looking at half the distance between them when you look at the nuclei. And I'll, I'll show you this in a minute. Okay, This can be measured uh, by different methods or experiments. Okay, So there's different ways you can do this. You can do the covalent radii. You can do the van der Waals radii. Uh, you can do um, crystal radii. There's different ways that you can do this. Um, but we're going to choose a simple way to do this. And again, you just have to know that what the radius is rather than you know the different experiments. Okay, and again, this is not easy to do because, again, you know, a nucleus in the middle, if you have a, you know, the, the electron cloud going around this, all right, and you have those different um, electrons in this, around this, it's kind of hard to find the actual edge out here. So what is the radius here? We kind of don't really know. All right, so we have a guideline for this. All right, um, has no clear edge to it. Okay, we generally do this in picometers. All right, which is a very small, uh, very small measurement. Typically, this is going to be, you know, in the hundreds of picometers meter, or even less. Okay, and this is going to be in trillions, basically trillions of a meter. All right, so really, if you take a look on how we actually do this, um, is that you're going to see the radius, the nucleus is in the middle here. Okay, that would be a positive charge in the middle. Okay, and what we do is we look at both. We look at this, and what we do is we take a ruler. And we measure that radius in between the two, and then we cut half of that. So if you cut half of that, that would be radius here. Okay, it would be that distance in that row or that distance there. Okay? All right, so anyway, so again, how does this work in the table? What is our trends? How do, is atomic? Is there a relationship between the uh, atomic radius of an element? And the first thing we want to do is take a look at what affects actually affects the radius of an atom. What really affects this. So we know we have a nucleus in the middle and we know we have an electron somewhere out here. Okay, but what affects that distance, that radius to out to the outer edge? Okay. And the number one thing we want to look at is the number of energy levels. I mean how many energy levels do you have? If you have a lot of energy levels, uh, then you're gonna have a larger radius, right? So more energy levels would be more. Okay, so more layer of its electrons, you would have a larger radius. Okay. So if you were in period two Okay, period two would be here, right? And this would be one, two, three, four. This would be period four. Period four, actually period two would be a smaller element than period two because you'd have more energy levels. Okay, you also have to look at the force of attraction, all right, of the nucleus to the electrons. Again, so more nuclear charge. Now, nuclear charge is something called the protons. And you have to understand that in the nucleus, again, you have these protons that are in the nucleus and you have neutrons, okay? Now the protons, if it was two protons, you would have a nuclear charge of two, okay? Neutrons don't do anything. Neutrons are neutral. So because of this, neutrons don't have any nu uh, nuclear charge, but uh, protons do. So this nuclear charge or the protons are going to attract and pull on the electrons in the same level, okay? So you're going to keep pulling on them. Okay, and that's called the effective nuclear charge. So the effective nuclear charge is the attractive pulling force of an electron, uh, 
on an electron, okay, experienced by the nucleus pulling or the pulling force. Yeah. Kind of messed up that sentence a little bit, but you get the so pulling on an electron by the nucleus. I would say by the nucleus. You don't even need this. Okay. All right. So again, so that's going to be the force of that attraction. So some you're going to be pulling that electron in. All right. So the shielding. And we're going to see this in our diagram the next time we do this. All right, shielding. Shielding is just like shielding if you would have shielding what a shield is. Shield blocks other things. All right, so again, not only do you have force of positive and negative attraction for the electrons and the protons, but you also have a repulsive force of electrons to each other, which is going to cause you to push the radius and make it bigger. Okay, so valence electrons are repelled okay, by inner electrons. Okay, and feel less attraction, that's the key, uh, to the nucleus, okay, because you're being blocked by this. So if you had an electron, let's just say you had a proton here, a nucleus, and you had an electron here, an electron here, this electron is going to be blocking that electron. It's going to be pushing it away. So it's going to block the electron here, all right, even though this electron is still attracted to the nucleus. So the more electrons you have in between other electrons, the more you're going to get this repulsive forces. So it really takes into account one, two, and three together really set the radius of an atom. All right, so again, a good way to see this is, is to see a, a weakly attracted electron out here. So that would be an a weakly attracted electron out there that is still attracted to the nucleus in here as its positive charge. But then again, it's got to see through all of these layers, okay, where a strongly attracted electron here has a direct attraction. And it's not blocked. Okay, so this is not blocked. Okay, or less shielding. Okay, and that's really what you want to get across when you do this. Okay, and this would experience a more shielding here. All right, so that's the reason. So to review really quickly, okay, what affects the radius? Numbers of energy levels. How many energy levels you have? If you have more energy levels you have a larger atom, just like an onion. An, a bigger onion has more layers in it than a smaller onion. All right, force of attraction, okay, uh, how well is that nucleus? How strong is that nucleus? Is it pulling on the electrons a lot and pulling that, that, that radius in? Or is it less of attraction and allowing those electrons to expand, okay? And then shielding, how well do other electrons shield other electrons? All of this will set the radius, all right? Uh, to illustrate this, we have a fun little game here. Uh, and again, I'll go quickly through this. We're going to do this in class, but those of you playing at home on this, okay? Uh, let's just say I look at the period two elements, okay? And if I look at period two, I will see the fact that we have lithium, and we're going to go across period two. So period two, again, is lithium, and then it goes beryllium, and then it goes across the period two. It goes to, to uh, boron, uh, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then it ends. So we're going to go across period two. Again, period would be that the energy level. And if you notice going across, a couple things I want you to know. Start with, with lithium. All right, and lithium, again, is going to have a 1s2, 2s1 configuration or a 2, 1. All right, and if you notice, the yellow one guy out here is its valence. Okay, now I'm going to ignore the 2. And the reason I'm going to ignore the 2 is because in all of these elements going across, the 2 is filled. So again, if you were in beryllium, you'd be 1s2. 2s2, so you'd be a 2, 2, and so on. So notice that the 1s2 throughout all of these guys is filled. I'm going to ignore that for now. So that means that each one in this row has the same amount of shielding because the valence electron out here, the yellow ones, okay, are, be, are adding each time you're going across. You're adding one, but they're experiencing the same shielding as the, to the first energy level. So this valence electron, this one valence electron on the outside is attracted to the, the three green protons in the front. So that's going to be attraction force, attractive force, and attractive force. All right, so I'm drawing three lines of attractive forces. So I want you to think that the, the lines equal attractive forces. Okay, so this attracts to this guy, attracts to that guy. So this electron out here is being attracted to each one of the three protons. Okay. Now, okay, well, that sets the radius of this, of this particular atom. Fine. So we go to the next element, lithium. Sorry, so that's lithium atomic number three. And then we go to beryllium number four. Now, in beryllium, 
how is it different than lithium? Well, lithium has, beryllium has one extra proton, right? And it has another valence electron. You're adding an electron and a proton. Well, how does this change the attraction? Let's take a look. Now you have this electron attracted to one, two, three, four protons. And so does this guy. He's attracted to one, two, three, four protons. And again, you're going to have a little repulsive force here, but mostly you're attracted to the nucleus here. All right, so you see what's happening. You might pick this up a little bit as you go across. Now in boron, you add another electron, 1s2, 2s2. Now you have a 2p1, slightly higher energy level, a little further from the nucleus, but you're still on the same energy level. But now you've got five protons pulling on three valence electrons. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. I actually want you to do this. I missed one. Five. All right? So then we go across. Next one. Add another proton. Add another electron. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You get the idea. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay? So things are starting to get a little crowded here. So that nucleus is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and it's pulling harder and harder and harder on this outside level. Now, what that causes it to do is that causes that radius to start getting drawn in to the middle of the atom. Okay, So check out nitrogen. Another proton, another electron. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So starting to get a little crowded in here. Starting to get a lot of attractive force. I'm getting on to oxygen now. Almost getting to the edge here. Again, we had an eighth proton and eight, a sixth valence electron. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And again, on to fluorine, the last one in this column. Again, we're not going to count the noble gas only because noble gases don't react. So we're looking at the reactive, reactive elements. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you can make the argument that this has the most attraction over here, okay, which would give you the smallest radius. Now, that's kind of interesting because fluorine has nine protons while lithium over here only has three. So this has three times the protons and electrons, and it's that much smaller in radius because the nucleus is so strong in this case, all right? So what do we actually see here is the final call is this kind of thing. All right, where you have your radius in general here. And that's going to be the important part of this. So if we look at this also, we can also make the argument in this case um, that if we look at the actual radii, okay, if we look at this, um, we'll see the radius gets so increased attraction, increased attraction to the nucleus, okay, uh, causes the radius to decrease going across the table, okay? Because think about it. The nucleus is pulling on electrons in only the second energy level. Remember, this is the second energy level. You're not increasing your energy level. You're not increasing your layers. You're staying with the second energy level, all right? So you group trends. So what happens in this case? So this is your period trend. So going across the same period, okay, you're going to be, you're getting those, you're getting that, uh, that thing there, all right? You're getting that, um, decrease in the atomic radius going across. All right. All right. Now, your period trends, okay, your period trends are a little different in this case. All right. As far as you go down, the, if you're going down the table here, all right, what well, what we find is that, let me just change my pen, sorry guys. Okay, when we go down the table, if we look at your, your radii going down, if you take the group trend, so we're going down the table in this case. So if you look at the periodic table, in this case, we're going down a group 
Okay, last time we were going across a period, now we're going down a group. If you take a look at these, you're going to find that as you go down, your radius actually increases because you got more layers to this. So I'm giving you the actual picometer, the radius difference here. Again, if you take a look at your uh, your radius in this case and your nucleus, your nucleus would be in the middle here, nucleus in the middle, nucleus in the middle, nucleus in the middle, nucleus in the middle. Okay, again, uh, your 1S, your, your radius would be here versus there versus there versus there versus there because, again, rubidium, if you look at where it is in the table, uh, you would see um, rubidium is a 5S1. So you would see 5S1 out here versus 4S1 versus 3S1 versus 2S1 versus 1S1. Okay, so you can see as that that electron gets further from the nucleus, the radius is larger, where you have your energy levels in between. That's important to know. All right, so why is this the case? Well, Adam's, Adam's going to add whole energy levels. Okay, so that's what you're doing. You're adding whole energy levels. Okay, electrons are further from the nucleus and repelled and shielded by inner electrons. Again, if you take a look, again, I can show you here. Uh, if I take a look at... Um, if I look at the layers, a good example maybe is potassium. Well, let's use sodium. You have the first energy level is going to be here. The second energy level is here. Okay. And then the third is here, which is where the 3S level is on. You're being shielded by the inner layers. And the more you go down here, the more layers you have in between, the more layers you have in between when you're looking at that valence electron. Okay. And this is a great way to see it with this. So you can see if you're going down the group, in this case, your radius increases. Okay, so AR's radius increases, but if you go across the table in that case, that rate, your atomic radius decreases. You can see period two is up here. You can see lithium, all right, and then beryllium is here, and then boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. You can see there's a gradual decrease. In fact, across the periodic table, the biggest elements will be here, okay, and the smallest will be here. All right, and you can see the, the height of this. I, I like the way this, this, this you can see this, the, the downhill movement across the periodic table of the radius. All right, so your smaller radii are really up in the upper right-hand corner, and your larger radii really end up in the lower left-hand corner. All right, and that's going to be a really important trend. All right? All right, and that's it on the radius. I just wanted to at least show you this, okay, and we'll be taking radii, and you'll be doing stuff with the radii as we move along, but that's the first trend. Uh, along the way. Again, it's determined by those first three things we talked about. All right, we'll see you in another in the video.